What is going on YouTube? Just helping you out here. And in this video, I am going to be doing Chapter 3, Problem 33 in the Fundamentals of Physics 10th Edition Extended Textbook by Walker, Halliday, and Resnick. Chapter 3 is all about vectors, and in Problem 33, we're given a set of vectors, and we are asked to do some computations involving the cross product of two vectors. Okay, so we are given a figure in this problem, and so the first thing that I would like to do is draw a similar diagram up here in the top right corner. And so we'll add that in, and you'll see it is a right triangle with a vector down here pointed to the right, a vector right here pointed up, and then we have this final vector right here that makes the hypotenuse of this right triangle, and that points in this direction here. Now we can give those vectors labels, and we'll say that this one here is A, this one here is B, and this one here is C. And so for part A, we are asked to compute the magnitude of the cross product between vectors A and B. And so the first thing that we can do is write out the equation for the magnitude of the cross product of two vectors. And in this case, for A and B, that's going to be the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them. Now, we are given the magnitude of all three vectors in the problem, so we know what the magnitude of A and B are. And theta is going to be 90 degrees because we know this is a right triangle and that angle happens to be the angle between A and B. So we have all the values we need to plug in here, so we can go ahead and do that. So you'll see we have 4 times 3 times the sine of 90. The sine of 90 is just 1, so that's 4 times 3 times 1, which is going to give us 12. And that is your final answer to part A. Now for part B, we are asked to find the direction of A cross B. And one way that we can do that is by using the right hand rule. And so for the right hand rule, you want to take your pointer finger and put that in the direction of your first vector, which is A. So that's going to be pointed to the right. And then your middle finger will be in the direction of B, or your second vector, which would be pointed up. And now your thumb should be in the direction of A cross B. And if you have your thumb sticking out, it should be pointed towards you or out of this screen, which is the positive Z direction. And that is your final answer for part B. So now if we clear this page, we can take care of part C, which is finding the magnitude of A cross C. Now you may be thinking, all right, we can just do the exact same thing we did in part A, write out the equation for the magnitude of the cross product of two vectors, which is this right here, and that is totally a viable solution. The only thing that you need to watch out for here is that this angle is now the angle right here, which we are not given in the problem, but you can figure it out since we are given A, B, and C. So you could calculate that angle, plug it in here, and that would give you your answer. But in this case, I think we can do something a little different by using some properties of vectors and some of the things we already calculated. Now back in part A, we did this calculation between vectors A and B. And since we have a right triangle here that connects all three vectors, what we can do is we can actually write vector C in terms of vectors A and B. So if we take a look at the diagram here, starting at the tail of vector C, we can go negative B and negative A to get to the head of vector C. So now what we can do is take this equation right here and plug that in to vector C. So you see that gives us A crossed with negative B minus A. And now what we can do is we can expand that out so this right here is A cross negative B plus A cross negative A. Now, A crossed with itself or the negative of itself, either or, is just going to equal zero. So these two terms cancel out, and we're left with A cross negative B. Now, another property of cross products allows us to take this constant right here, which is negative one, and pull it to the outside of this cross product. So we can rewrite this as the magnitude of negative a cross b. Now, a cross b, we calculated in part a. We know it's 12, so that leaves us with the magnitude of negative 12, which again gives us the answer of 12, and that is the final answer to part c. Now for part d, we want to know the direction of a cross c, and we can do the same thing that we did in part b. We can use the right hand rule, where your pointer finger will go in the direction of a, your middle finger will go in the direction of c, now, if you did that correctly, your thumb will be pointed in the direction of A cross C, which in this case should be away from you or into the screen, which is the negative Z direction. And that is your final answer to part D. And now for part E, we have the last combination of vectors, the magnitude of B cross C. Now, once again, we can write it in that form that we did in part A. 
But again, we have the ability to write this vector C in terms of A and B, so we can go ahead and do that the same way we did in part C. And so we'll go ahead and toss in that minus B minus A. Again, we can expand this out, B cross negative B plus B cross negative A. Again, vector with itself is just zero, so we're left with B cross negative A. And again, we can take out this negative one and put it on the outside. So we're left with the magnitude of negative B cross A. And that right there is equivalent to the magnitude of A cross B. Again, A cross B we found in part A, it's 12. And that is your final answer to part E. And finally, for our last part, part F, we want the direction of B cross C. And you will again do this the exact same way that you did parts B and D. You're going to use the right hand rule with your pointer finger in the direction of B. You're going to have your middle finger in the direction of C. And that will mean that your thumb is pointed in the direction of B cross C, which in this case should be toward you or out of the screen, which is the positive Z direction. And that is your final answer to part F. All right, so that's about it for this problem. Feel free to check out my solutions to other problems in the playlist in the top left corner. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. Leave a comment if you have any questions or an idea for a future video. Feel free to follow my Instagram and TikTok in the description below. And lastly, please don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about my channel so I can grow and help more of you guys out. I'm just helping you out. See you in the next video.